thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for beautiful properties for people, Father. Thank you for homes and houses. Thank you, Father. Thank you for beautiful property, Father, for the people. Thank you for houses, for those that are believing for houses. Thank you, Father, for property. Thank you, Father. Oh, Brikata. If that's you, you might as well just go ahead and raise your hands and say, I receive it. Father, I receive that in the name of Jesus. I receive that, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's look at something. Go with me to Mark. Uh, excuse me. Let's, uh, let's go. Yeah, let's go to, well, let's go to Hebrew. Father, you, you just tell me how you want it done, Father. I'll do it, Lord. Go with me to the book of Hebrew. Hallelujah. Amen. Book of Hebrew, the, the 11th chapter. Hallelujah. Hebrew, the 11th chapter, Hebrews. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice this. We're entering into 2019. We have a mandate. We have a mandate to develop our, our, our born-again spirit man. We have a mandate to educate that born-again spirit man and to train and develop that spirit-born man, that born-again spirit man. In other words, if we're going somewhere, which we are, that means this year is going to be a higher place for us to go. We're going higher every year. Remember, we're not going backwards. We're going higher. So we're going to look at something in Hebrews, the, first chap the 11th chapter, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is now. Faith is a now thing. Faith is now. Faith, if I were to read it this way, faith is now the substance of things hoped for. So in other words, in order for faith to work now, you've got to have a hope. Now notice this. Um, hope in what? In what you're believing to receive. You know, I, I'm hoping to, to be married in, in, in the year to come. Then you've got to start seeing yourself married. I'm hoping to have a uh, to get closer to God, be filled with the Word of God, be more uh, uh, attractive to the things of God, then you've got to see yourself now. So it's faith. It just doesn't fall on you just by osmosis. You've got to believe it. You've got to know that it's now, but you've got to have a picture of it. Anything that you want, anything that you believe in God for. Uh, when we were believing God for this church, I had an image of this church already. But the image did not come until first I got the Word from God, and then I started declaring what the Word says, and then I started declaring what He was saying through me, or through the Spirit, through prayer, and I would say, it's a beautiful place. I, I remember a lot of you, a lot of you that were here before us, or the, the, a lot of people that were before you, remember me saying for many years, it's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place. I thank you, Lord, for our beautiful place, and a lot of people ask me, so what does a place look like? It's just beautiful. Really, I did not see the place late until later, but I knew it was beautiful, so I was hoping uh, that was my hope. We need a place, and it's got to be a beautiful place. Well, the word of the Lord taught me to say that, so hope brought that through, but it took faith. So faith is now, so look at it again. Faith is now the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Say what we mean, not seen. In other words, hope is not what you see in the natural, because it's already there. You don't need faith what you see now. Well, I want, I want that truck of pastor. Well, have you seen it in your spirit? You can't just see what I have. You've got to see it in your spirit. Have you seen yourself drive a truck like that? Have you seen yourself have a truck like that? Well, no. Well, then you've got to get it first. Because see, what you're seeing, it's not faith. It's just what you're wanting. You're seeing what you're wanting there. You've got to see it in you. Can you say amen? amen. So in other words, faith is a now word. Say with me a now word. Now. So in other words, it's one of the greatest and in fact, if I'll tell you, faith is a supernatural force that is most part, it's the most powerful entity on earth. Faith is the most powerful entity on earth that a believer can have. Can you say amen? amen. Now notice this. Let's look at Mark now. Say with me, faith is, now. faith is now. So in other words, it's right now. It's not tomorrow. It's right now. I believe that I receive now in Jesus' name. Yes. Not one day until I see it. No, 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 no. I believe I receive it now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice what it says in Mark, the 11th chapter. Hallelujah. And notice what it says. And uh, well, I thought I was in Mark. I'm in Luke. 
Hallelujah. We will be going to Luke. Mark 11. Thank you, Father. Listen to what it says in, uh, in verses 12. Matthew 11, verses 12. And Jesus, on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Jesus was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came to it. If he haply might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto him, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Now go all the way down to verses, uh, verses 19. And when the evening was come, he went out of the city. And in the morning, say with me, in the morning, 24 hours passed. As they passed by this, and they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remember, saith unto Jesus, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Now notice this all together, this repeated all together, have faith in God. Verses 22, Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in God. Were you, were you reading with me? Did I lose anybody? Okay. So in other words, verses 22 all together. Have faith in God. One more time. Have faith in God. Now notice this. Have faith in God. But if you look at the root translation of this from the truest root, it says have the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith. Now notice this. God is a God of faith, for He created everything by faith also. By a spoken word, He declared it. So therefore, we have to have His kind of faith. Now, let, let understand something here. Sometimes we think that God is just an entity so far away that, oh, He's so far in you know, when I think of him, i got to be prepared. i got to really just prepare my heart to talk to him. And I'm, I'm not ready yet. I'm just a sinner. He will not hear me. He's just so far away. You know, uh, oh, I know. I, I. Is that true or false? That's false. God is closer than your breath. All the prayers that you do, all the crying you do for, before God, you're thinking you're letting Him be aware of what you're going through. No, that's not true. He already knows what you're going through before you've ever been through it. All He wants you to do is to have His ability in you. You get His ability when you receive Jesus as your personal Savior. When you said, Jesus, come into my heart, I believe you're the Son of God. You died for me, and on that third day you resurrected. Jesus, I believe, come into my heart. That is the most powerful prayer an individual can pray for his life because that will change that person's life. Now notice this. That moment, God has come inside you. That moment you've given your heart to Jesus, now he took residence in you. Now, this body no longer belongs to you. It is the, altogether, temple of of the living God. So in other words, my hands are hands to honor God, but at the, at the same time to help humanity. Jesus uses my hands. He uses my mouth. He uses your eyes. He uses everything about you. That's why when Jesus comes in you, it's not to hide him and let, any, not, let, let nobody know that you're born. In other words, your job is not to be an undercover agent for God. <laughs> Amen. Your job is not to, not to hide from the world and say, I'm, I'm going to church. Shh, 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 shh. Don't let anybody know. No, 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 no. Your job is to express Jesus. So they'll see Jesus in you. So in other words, he says, have the God kind of faith in you. In other words, the way God talks is the way you should talk. The way God declares is the way you should declare. The way Jesus prayed for people is the way you should pray. The way people spoke to things. Now here he spoke to a fig tree. It was 24 hours that that fig tree died from the roots up. 24 hours later. Now that's moving pretty powerful in the things of the supernatural. But notice this. The disciples came to Jesus and Jesus, look! 
You curse that tree, it's, it, it's dead, it's dead. Oh, I'll tell you, that tree probably just dried up, ready for someone to use as firewood. Come on, church, hallelujah, amen. But notice what he says here. <laughs> notice what he says here. He says here, verse 22, Jesus answered and said, have faith in God, but if you go to the root of it, the truest root of this translation, have the God kind of faith. Have the faith of God. Right? Now notice what he says here. He says here, now let's keep reading. For verily I say unto you, he's speaking to us, say with me, he's speaking to me. I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, didn't say just to, just to murmur, meditate, or think. He said say. Now how do you say things out of your mouth? Whosoever shall say out of your mouth unto you, Whatsoever, verily I say unto you, that whatsoever you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt. Not doubt. Don't doubt what you're going to say when you have the God kind of faith. Don't doubt it. In other words, your mind will say, this is ridiculous. I'm speaking to a tree. I'm speaking to a tree like Jesus said. This is ridiculous. No, no, that's doubt. This is ridiculous. How could I speak to a mountain? That's doubt. You speak to that mountain. What is a mountain? Anything that is bigger than you. Anything that is bigger than you, but yet it's, big, it's actually smaller to God. Put yourself next to the biggest debt that you have. Who's bigger, you or the debt? Well, the debt's probably bigger because it's been on your mind, but really you're bigger than that debt. Simply by saying to that debt, debt in the name of Jesus, I command you, be cast into the sea. Now, be removed now from my life in Jesus' name. Now notice this, that means declaring, whosoever shall say, remember you're having the God kind of faith, God kind of faith. Who shall so say without doubting? Now doubting is the problem here that we uh, limit ourselves and we start thinking the way that the world says we're supposed to think. Well, you're not making enough money to be debt free. No, that's not the Bible way. The Bible way is you declare, you break yourself out of that debt. Come on, church, hallelujah, amen. Like this church, uh, you know, people, I never told anybody that was not a believer, uh, or I never really told anybody except you that we're believing God for a church, except there's a few ministers that had prayed for me, my mother, uh, people that believe God that I know would pray. Because many would say, I had a couple of people say, they found out somehow they were getting a building. So well, I don't know how you're going to pay for that building. Listen, you're going to get yourself in debt, and, and you're going to hurt your future. Oh, <laughs> I said, devil, get behind me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Now, notice this. Notice this now. Now, notice the, the Bible here says, and shall say, he says, for who, for verily I say unto you, verse 23, say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he say shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. And notice, look at that word, doubt in his heart. Where's that at? The heart. The spirit man. It's the spirit man. Your spirit man is what you're going to build up. It's the spirit man that you're building up now. Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So in other words, it's the spirit man that needs to be built up. Right now, your spirit man is, is getting built up by the word of God. So in other words, you have to say and believe what the word says and say it out of your spirit man. Not out of the natural not of the soulish. Remember, the soulish is comp composed of what? And I know I'm probably going so fast for some, but, but that's okay. You'll catch on. Soul. Mind, will, and emotion. That's the soul. Mind, will, and emotion. He says, get your mind out of the way. Get your emotions out of the way. Come on, church. And, and, and get, get, your, get your mind, your, your soul, soulish things get out of the way. That's not what moves mountains. What moves mountains is what you believe in your spirit man which is the heart of man, the heart of man. It's not the pumper. It's not the pumper that pumps blood that he's talking about. That's fleshly. He's talking about the spirit man. I want you to touch yourself right here. The spirit man within you. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, it's this man that comes alive. When you speak the word of God, it's this man that's coming alive. When you're declaring and you're believing God for things by the word of the Lord, it's this man, not this man. It's this man that's speaking, the inner man, the heart of the man, which is the spirit man. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? So in other words, uh, we've got to believe that you have to have the faith of God. And notice this, you can believe for bad things and it'll happen. You can believe for good things and it'll happen. Either way, you can believe negative or you can be positive. People can say, 
Man, I tell you what, I'm so scared to death, this and this and this and this. Well, you're saying it long enough, you're going to believe it. I, I'm, I could get sick. Oh, I just don't want to. I don't want to go out there because I'll get the flu. I'll get the flu. I'll get the flu. And, and, and you know, you realize something. You got the flu, not because of the germ. You got the flu because you confessed the flu. Come on, church. See, either way, you're going to get whatever you say. So you might as well put some effort in saying what the Word of God says. Hey, come on, church. Amen? In other words, uh, I, I'm not going to get the flu in Jesus' name. I believe I'm healed in the name of Jesus. I think when I go to work, I have the, the faith of God around me that protects me from all those germs out there. Well, what are you doing? You're declaring something good over you. Hallelujah. Amen? And I want that. I'd rather have that than the wrong confession coming out of my mouth. Don't ever say, I'm broke. Don't ever say, I can't afford it. Don't ever say, I'll never have anything. Don't ever say, I'm just a dummy. Don't ever say, I, 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 just, I, I just can't, I can't imagine me having that. No! Say, I can have all things through Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Can you say amen? amen. Now, notice what it says here. Verse 24. Verse 23 says, But shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So let me say it this way. You will have whatsoever you say. You will have whatsoever you say. Verse 24. Therefore I say, Jesus says unto you. Jesus is speaking to you. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, things you desire, whatso things you desire, things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So in other words, it's not saying when you have those things, then you believe that you receive them. No, that's not what he's saying. He's saying whatsoever you desire. Come on, church. There's nothing wrong with a desire, having a desire, a godly desire, a good desire, a godly word desire. Whatsoever I desire when I pray, I believe that I receive them. Now notice this. I believe when I pray. I believe when I pray. When I pray, I believe. When I pray, I believed. So you got to get some praying in there. So when I pray, I believe whatsoever I desire. Isn't that so wonderful how he's saying this? But yet we're trying to believe first that we can have it. That's Doubting Thomas attitude. Doubt, Doubting Thomas uh, was not there when Jesus came to the disciples. And so he didn't believe. He didn't believe Jesus resurrected. He said, uh-uh, I'll not believe it until I put my hand first uh, upon, that, upon that scar, upon his holes. I'll not believe it. Well, one day Jesus came when he was there. He walked right through the wall. Jesus came right through the wall and ate among them. Now, that's, that's, that's supernatural right there. And then he told Thomas, Thomas, put your hand to my side. And Thomas says, whoa, put his hand in Jesus. Thomas, put your hand in my hand. He said, whoa. He said, I believe. Jesus says, you didn't believe. You didn't believe. He said, blessed are those that believe and yet don't see me. That's the key. We've got to believe though we don't see. I thank you, Lord, that we have a beautiful church. And I remember we were saying that a couple years ago. I thank you I have a beautiful church. Everybody said, well, where's that church at? I don't know until one day. I started, the more I said it, the more I said it, the more I saw it, the more I saw it, the more I saw it, the more I prayed, the more I prayed, the more I saw it, the more I saw it, the more I declared, the more I declared. Red building, red building, red building, red building. I see it, I see it, it's a beautiful place. I see it, I see it, I see it. Where is it? I don't know, but I see it, I see it. They say, what's happening? I'm believing by praying that I received it. And then one day it fulfilled itself. Come on, church. This is the way we get somewhere. This is the way we get somewhere in life. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. Come on, church. And now notice this verse 25. Now I want you to see verses 25. Because verses 25 is important. Now, and when you stand praying, remember, you're praying what you're believing for. You're praying what you're believing for. When you stand praying, forgive. Oh, Jesus. That's the key right here. Forgive if you have ought against anyone that your Father which is in heaven may forgive your trespass or forgive your grudges. Now notice this. This, is, this has to be faith here. This has to be faith here. Because see, when you forgive, it's not about feelings. It's about faith. Now notice this. Your feelings get hurt when people offend you. But that's not the important case here. The case here is that it'll ruin your faith prayer or your prayer in faith. 
That's the key. The key is, well, that person hurt my feelings. It doesn't matter if that person hurt your feelings. What the enemy's trying to do is damage your faith when you pray. Come on, church. Now, if somebody has hurt you, then you're not going to feel that you forgave them, but you're going to do it by faith. Father, I forgive such and such. That person hurt me, so I forgive them, Father, in the name of Jesus. What did you just do? You just added fuel to your prayer when you ask God for things. Because, see, if you have a heart that is unforgiving, you can pray all you want, but you'll never receive anything because you're still holding people down. He says, forgive, ask the Father to forgive you. And this is what it says here. Uh, look at it very closely, and I'm going to spend a little time on this. When you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any. Ought against any, what does that mean, ought against any? Ought. That literally just means you just, you just hurt by that person. I, I just touched, I just, I just, no, I can't stand that person. I, I just, I just, I won't forgive this person. No, no, I think the thing to do is to go ahead and forget and let go of that person. And notice this, do I still have to hang around that person that hurt me? No, he's not, he's not talking about that. He's talking about forgive and go on with God. Come on, church. Tell me, I forgive. I forgive. This is the key that we have to have. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, when we see this, we understand why he says this. Now, I want you to go with me to 1 Corinthians. This is a key. Remember, faith is the most powerful supernatural force or entity on earth. But it needs you to operate the way the Bible says it. Remember, whatsoever you pray, you believe that you receive. That's the way to get it. But then he says, forgive those that you have ought against. So the next key is, remember, if you're going to get something from God and believe in by faith, you've got to walk in forgiveness. Now, pastor, I, I, be, I can forgive, but I can't forget. No, that's not true. You can forgive. The more that you walk in forgiveness, the more you walk in forgetting. Now, the way it comes up is when something triggers that, that opportunity or that thought again. And usually, you should not go there. In fact, you sh should know that you should not go there when somebody is trying to press your button. Say, no, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. It's not by feelings. I forgave. And, and I forgot in Jesus' name. I forget. I forget. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be looking at that person that hurt you, and you can be saying it in faith. Father, I forgive this person in faith. Now, you're not saying it out loud, but you're saying it. Uh, thank you, Father. I forgive this person in Jesus' name. Now, there'll be some opportunities that you may have that God will allow you to go to that person and say, please, please forgive me. I, I had all against you, and I ask you to forgive me, and I love you in Jesus' name. There'll be some opportunities that God will have you do that, too. Come on, church, hallelujah, amen. Maybe you're mean at work, and you're just, ah, ah, and you hurt somebody, and that person now is walking in awe against you because you chowed on, chewed on that person. You can go to that person and say, you know what, I just want to tell you something. I want to tell you something, uh, Susie. I, I was mean to you. I, I, please forgive me. Please forgive me. I, don't, and don't even... Don't even waste your time with explaining why you were mad. Just say, I, just please forgive me, all right? All right. You don't have to use an excuse. You'd be lying if you say an excuse. I hear people always give excuses. Christians always give excuses. I can't go to church because you just lied. I can't pray because I just can't get that you just lied. The best thing is just say it. I can't, and that's it. I, for, I ask you to forgive me. Amen. Come on, church. Can you say amen? Now, notice this. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, notice what it says here in, in Corinthians. Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Are you with me, folks? Now, this is going to help you in moving into that higher realm with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Higher realm with God. But this is the year of abundant harvest. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, notice what it says here. Verse 13. And now... Abided faith. Are you there? 1 Corinthians 13. 13. Are you there? Everybody there? Say with me, amen. Come on, church. Get your amenners together. Hallelujah. Amen. And now abideth faith. Amen. Abides faith. Hope. Amen. Charity. That's love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Oh, the Bible says charity, but really it's love, love, charity. The translators did their best in, in trying to explain the love for someone, which is charity. Charity is really giving. You love somebody, you're giving of yourself. It's a free gift, hallelujah, amen. So in other words, there's three things here, but number one, uh, now abide in faith. Thank God for abiding faith. Hallelujah, say with me, amen. Thank God for, for uh, abiding faith. Thank God for hope. Remember, now it's charity, it's love. It's love, say with me, it's love. Hallelujah, amen. I want you to think about it now. 
This kind of love is, is, is agape love. This is a God kind of love. In fact, uh, let me find it for you in, in the Amplified. Do you have the Amplified with you? Now, now, now I want you, do you have it with you right now? Bring it up here quickly. Hallelujah. That, you're probably faster than my fingers on this thing. Now, notice what it says here. Oh, good, good. Now, there remaineth faith, abiding trust in God and His promise. That's what, that's what faith is. Hope is a confident expectation of eternal salvation. Love. Now, notice what it says about love. Unselfish love for others growing out of God's love for me. The more that I grow in love of God, the more I have love for others. So in other words, it's the unselfish love for others growing out of God's love for me. These three, the choices, the choice is grace, it's of these is love. So the choices of this is love. So in other words, the, thank you. The more that I love God, the more that I'm falling in love with God, the more that I'm loving people. Now this is, you have to forgive, but you also have to walk in love. It's a agape kind of love. Well, that person doesn't deserve anything from me. No, you just don't know God because what God did for you, <laughs> what God did for you, God can do it for them. What God has done for you, God loves that person like he loves you. You're not special in this world. You're not the only one that God is looking at as special. God is looking at the whole world. He loves everyone. Hallelujah. And he wants everybody to walk in love. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell me love. So in other words, the more I grow in God, the more I'm going to love my fellow worker, my fellow friend. Uh, the more I said this years ago, the more you pray for people, the more you're going to fall in love with them. I said this when, when President, uh, at that time, I believe, was uh, Bush, and then from there, Obama, and now Trump. You know, I know, I know a lot of people don't like certain presidents, and, but I want to tell you something. I want to be frank with you about according to the Bible. I know many of us, uh, many of us uh, we, we have our ways to talk about leadership and this and this and this and this. The reason why you're affected by them is because you don't love them. But if you pray for them, you'll see them. In different lights you see each president that maybe you didn't agree with you understand you'll understand the more you pray for oh I pray for everyone I pray for everyone everyone every president that was in line I pray for them I can feel what they're going through I can sense uh, I can just imagine what they go through every day their families go through what they go through see when you pray for them you're now reaching out toward them in the love of God come on church the more that you love God the more that you'll love your president the more that you love God, the more that you love your neighbor that wakes you up in the middle of the night. <laughs> Come on. The more that you love God, the more you love your, your job, your people at work. Come on, church. This is, this is the greatest love, agape love. Oh, yeah, there's faith. You can have whatever you ask when you believe. Yes, there's faith. When you pray, you can believe that you receive. But you got to walk in forgiveness, and you got to love your brother. Love your brother. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Amen. you got to love when people are mean. you got to love them. You know, it's one of the hardest things to do, but you, if you could do it in faith, every opportunity. I want you to start thinking, every opportunity a person gives you to get upset with them, that's a stronger opportunity for you to grow in God. If the person that ordered your hamburger and didn't put the mustard on it and gave you mayonnaise, and that person didn't give you potato chips or, or french fries, but gave you, I don't know, onion rings, and you walk away, oh, that person didn't know what it was. Oh, that person just, ah, oh, that person doesn't need to work. Ah. Oh. Just say, well, thank you, Father. I, I love you, Father. Thank you that at least I got onion rings. <laughs> thank God at least I got mustard, amen, mayonnaise, whatever it may be. See, that's the opportunity to check yourself. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Can, can, uh, hallelujah. Amen. Now, notice this. Go with me to Galatians now. So, in other words, we got to walk in love. Got to walk in love. Remember, Jesus said, have the faith of God. And God is love. Well, let's find it in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Uh, I'm sorry, Galatians, Galatians. Thank you, sir. Galatians, the fifth chapter. Hallelujah, amen. Notice what it says here in verses, uh, oh, there's so much there, but let's just read verses six. Hallelujah, amen. Say with me, amen. amen. Now notice this. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcised. But faith worketh by love. 
So in other words, for in Jesus Christ, there's neither those that walk in the law, walk in the word, walk in the flesh. It, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Come on. Come on. But you got to understand something. Faith works by love. So if we're going to pray, Father, I thank you that I received this, and you don't have love, it's not going to work. Because love, faith, worketh by love. So in other words, before I do that, and it's quite interesting because a lot of times when I would pray about certain things, certain people would come into my mind. And that person was the one that I would have to forgive in my prayer life. In other words, I'd be asking God, God, I thank you, Lord, for whatever may be such and such. Uh, Lord, I thank you for such and such. I thank you, Lord. And all of a sudden, that person's mind, a person's name comes up. And, and that's strange. Well, Father, I just keep praying. Oh, I know why that person's name came up. Lord, I forgive that person by faith. I forgive that person. I release it. They have no bondage on me. I have no bondage on them. I forgive them. They owe me nothing in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I come back to you. Oh, now I walk into the new realm of the praying. Come on, church. And it always happens. Have you ever noticed that when you're praying about something, all of a sudden you're going to, Holy Spirit's going to remind you about something to do before you continue that prayer. And if you try to kick it away, you're kicking away God's blessing. Amen. I remember one time, uh, uh, my best friend years ago, and I forgive him years ago, my best friend, uh, uh, good friend that we had, uh, uh, kind of came between me and my, um, uh, my temporary position that I had, and, and it hurt me, it hurt me, it hurt me. And uh, we lived so close, maybe about a mile from each other. And all the time that we lived, we never met each other. We never saw each other. We never got to talk. I mean, you know, we knew we were living in town. I was upset with him and he was upset with me. And one day at Sam's, we went to Sam's and, and you know how you put your stuff on the Sam thing? We're putting the stuff on the Sam. And the guy right here, that's the guy. That was my friend. And, and I looked, whoa, and he looked at me, oh, and we just both freezed right there. And I said, God, it's amazing, God, how you did that. Okay, God, I obey what you want me to do. I called him up. I said, hey, listen, can we have lunch? I'm going to buy you lunch. He said, oh, oh, he was really hurt and really upset, you know. We went to eat lunch, and we went. I know he liked barbecue, so I took him to a real nice barbecue in Edmond. And, and uh, I said, hey, listen, before we start anything, I just want to tell you I love you, and I want to tell you I forgive you, and I know you forgive me, and I love you. And listen, let's just let this this thing go, whatever divided us, and hey, come on, let's just enjoy some ribs, amen, all right, let's, hallelujah. so we prayed, I got his hands, and we said, Father, I bless him, and he blesses me, oh, hallelujah, we got some ribs, and you know what, it changed that whole opportunity, that whole attitude, the whole thing, why, because love came, love came in the midst of this, come on, church, amen, so the, those are the things that we have to work, work, now notice what it says here, it says here, now notice, where were we, Galatians 5, 6, he says this in, in verse 6, For in Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor circumcision. I don't care how much you know the word or how much you try to follow the law of the word of God. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters here is faith worketh by love. Everything that you follow in the word is going to be focused on love. Everything on love. Everything on love. Everything on love. So we have some homework to do. Come on, church. Once we clear this up, then we're able to say, Father, I desire such and such. Amen. Come on, church. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Say with me, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Say with me, amen. Now look at Philippians. Look at Philippians. And if you do that with the Amplified Bible, let's go to Philippians. Philippians, the first chapter. Say with me, amen. Now, you remember hope? We said faith is the substance that things hope for. Remember we talked about hope? Philippians, the first chapter, verses 19 and 20. Remember we talked about when we opened it according to Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Remember I said you need hope? Let me just say this about hope. Hope is like a canvas already drawn in your heart. I already see myself married. I already see myself with this beautiful house. I already see myself just loving God even more. I see me in the house of God in prayer means studying the word of God. I see myself, you, whatever. That's the hope. That's what you need. You need that. You need that picture. You need that canvas. Because see, remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Remember, Jesus went to the, to the tree and, and he wanted some figs. There was no figs. He cursed it. It died. There was no longer hope for that tree. No longer. That tree never lived again. What happened? He taught us how to have faith in what you say. So now he's learning, teaching us we have to have faith 
and forgiveness, walk in love so that our hope can get beautiful. We can have a beautiful picture. I gave my wife a puzzle for Christmas. She wanted a puzzle. She says, anything that you want to get, I want a puzzle, just a puzzle. That's all I want. And so uh, the reason why she wanted a puzzle is because every time we go for radiation, uh, all the year before, um, uh, or the couple months there, she was doing puzzles. Or whenever we should go to the oncologist, she was doing puzzles. And every time we walk into the oncologist's office, there was always puzzles. And it was so neat. So she did real good in puzzles. And so I bought her a thousand piece puzzle and uh, when she opened it for christmas she's oh my god and there's a picture of the puzzle and she's oh my god this is awesome thank you i mean any any anything that she got she loved that puzzle and so she opened that puzzle and here my granddaughters come we have our granddaughters for the winter holiday and they open up the box and they're looking at that picture Okay, my little granddaughter, uh, Clara, oh, hey, Grandma, here, it's this picture right here. It's this one right here. This is it. This is it. Yeah. So they're looking at that picture. So that picture is important. That picture is important to put that puzzle. Well, I, I want to tell you that puzzle is almost, almost the three quarters finished. It's, it's almost finished. Amen. I mean, you can literally see it. It's a picture. It's a puzzle. But I saw something. I saw them looking at the picture and looking at the little pieces. You can see their focus on their eyes. And whenever they put it in place, they say, ooh, and then... What was happening? Every piece was making them see that picture. And it was helping them put more to it. Right? Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see where I'm going with this? That's what you need in your canvas of life. You need to see that picture. And you got to get rid of any blemishes you don't see. In other words, listen, there's people that have a picture of their home. That one woman, uh, 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 our spiritual mother, Gloria Copeland, for 30 years, uh, drew, put together pieces uh, of, of paper from magazines that she, this is the way she wanted a house. For 30 years, she would cut pieces and she folded, and, you know. So she was dreaming about a house until one day she came to Kenneth Copeland and she said, honey, uh, I, this house is, I got to tell you, either we build it or get rid of it. It's so big in me. And he said, well, go ahead. Let's just go ahead and build it. And so they built the house. Listen, when they came to the architect, the architect looked at her and says, oh my God, everything, you've done everything. All I got to do is just transpose what you did makes my job easier to just measurements and, and so that the carpenters can do it. Oh my God, you did it all for me. This is the easiest job I ever had. Why? 30 years she was imaging that house. So in other words, she had a pretty good canvas, hope. I want to remind you about a hope that you can't forget. Let's look at it right here. Come on, church. Amen. Let's look at, where are we going? Philippians 1.19. Now notice what it says. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Now notice what he says. According to my earnest expectation, according to my earnest expectation, I know this is, and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Now notice this. What was he saying here? Look at what was he saying. I have an expectation of a hope that either by death or life, I'm going to preach Christ. Paul's been dead a long time. He wrote three quarters of the New Testament, and today we're still living these testaments but notice this he painted a picture about his expectation and this expectation is the hope in jesus now notice i want you i want to remind you about something first before we go on remember your greatest hope is to see jesus so it'll be amen that's our greatest hope we're going somewhere oh he passed uh, listen listen it's not about the house that you want it's not about the car, what you're believing for. The greatest expectation is we're going to see Jesus one day. I want you to have that in your big canvas. I'm going to be with Jesus. I see myself having a communion with him. Oh, I see myself talking to, to him. I see myself, oh, oh, God, that's my expectation. Oh, thank you, Father. That's my, that's my future. That's my future. My greatest expectation is to see Jesus. When you have that type of greatest expectation, now, I, listen folks, now from that moment on, everything you believe in God has to have that expectation. Just like the house, they, just like this church. I thank you, Lord, for this beautiful church. I saw it. I saw this before I ever saw it in the natural. 
I saw this. It was my expectation. I remember when we would have, uh, when we would have fellowships in that back room, in that back room of that building, and, and the owner would come and always get on us about not cleaning up. We would clean up the place beautiful, and he would still get upset with us. I remember one time, um, it was Easter of 2015, 16. Uh, we had Easter there. We had beautiful barbecue back there, and, and then I told the church, church, uh, listen, we've only been here an hour and a half. We've got to clean up. Let's clean up perfectly so we can go. So we cleaned up real good. I'm talking about everybody cleaned up so good. They mopped, they vacuumed through the trash. Well, there was another church that came behind us. And they had a, they had a celebration, but they had, they had uh, I guess they, had, uh, they didn't use tablecloths. So everything they, they ate was all over the table. You can see finger marks. They must have like eaten chicken, you know, whatever it might have been. And, and you can see crumbs everywhere. The trashes were not empty. And the owner called me upset. He said, I got to see you right now, sir. Well, sure, I'll drive up there. What's up? He said, look at this building the way you left it. I said, sir, that wasn't us. He says, well, they said it was you. Ooh, you're talking about somebody want to get mad. But I said, oh, I smiled. I forced a smile. I said, Jay, listen, I know uh, we've been here five years, and you know our history. He's, they've been here only one month. So you're going to believe them over us. And not only that, we did clean it up. He said, really, you cleaned it up? I said, we did, we did. But I remember after I left, I got in my car. I said, Father, we need our own place, Lord. I, I, we need our own place, God. We need a place that we can stay as long as we want. We can fellowship. We're, we're, of course, we know how to clean up. Lord, we need our own place. Lord, oh, Jesus, I just thank you. So then the Lord said, start seeing yourself enjoying your own place. I started seeing ourselves having wonderful dinners. Wonderful dinners. Laughing, everybody laughing. Everybody laughing. Amen. What's going on? Hope has arised in me after that anger. Anger tried to destroy my faith. But do you know what? When I called him and said, Brother Jay, uh, he's a brother in the Lord. I said, Jay, I just want to let you know we're, we're going to be moving. We got our own place. He said, really? He said, yes, sir, we got our own place. And, and uh, we like our deposit back, what we've given. He says, wow. He says, do you guys really have to go? I said, yes, sir. He said, man, you guys, you guys blessed me here, man. You guys, I mean, well, you guys came in with those no business, and all of a sudden I saw business, and I asked you to forgive me. I did treat you bad. And I said, hey, hey, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. I love you, Jay, and I bless you, and we're going. He said, man, I hate to leave you, let you go. Why? He knew the blessing was leaving. Can you say amen? <laughs> amen, hallelujah, amen. What did I do? I walked in love. I hugged him. I pray for him. In fact, when I gave him the key, I said, give me your hands. I said, I, I thank you, Father, for this man that has blessed us here five years, and we thank you for him, Lord, and we thank you the blessing on him, and we left. Hallelujah. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because, see, we have to have a great expectation. It's only great expectation. Stand up. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, notice, I want you to walk away with this in mind. Continue having the greatest expectation that you're going to see Jesus. Continue having the greatest expectation. Lord, 2019 is a year for me to get closer to you, for me to enjoy more of your presence, to do more of your glory. Use me more for your glory. Use me, Jesus, more for you. Whatever you want me to do, Jesus, I'll do it. Oh, Father, use me more. And while you're doing that, now notice is now your expectation and your personal life starts coming in. You bless God, he'll, he'll start taking care of you. Remember this. Now, also remember, as you walk away today, remember this. As you leave today, remember, faith is having forgiveness, and loving people. Love your people. Remember, this year, uh, you're going to have opportunity to hate your president more. Come on. I'm already seeing it. People, I even see people bashing our president, and I get so uh, touched by that because uh, it, it makes me realize we don't know what we're doing. We need to pray for president. You need to pray for everybody more. Walk in love. Walk in love. Say, I love, I love Oklahoma City. Walk in love, walk in love, walk in love. Come on, church. Walk in love. Hallelujah. Amen. Grow in love, grow in love. Hallelujah. And when you pray, believe that you receive. Come on. Amen. How many people are believing for things? Raise your hand. Are you believing for things? Remember, when you pray, after you prayed about that, after you prayed, now start thanking. Thank you, I receive. Don't go back to pray it over again because you're dismissing that first prayer. Thank God that I've already prayed. I received it. Even if it's the hardest thing that you think it's going to take a miracle. Well, praise God. God's in the miracle business. Amen. I receive it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for your word this morning. Thank you, Father. We walk in love. We have a great expectation that you're coming, Lord. Oh, I have hope. 
I have hope in, in what I believe in you for, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, I thank you. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, I thank you, Father. And Lord, I walk in love. I walk in love. I walk in love. I walk in love. The more that I grow in you, Lord, the more the love of God is shed abroad in my heart. The more that I love you, Father, the more I grow in you, the more that I'm loving people in the name of Jesus. Oh, Ramakata. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Now remember, walking in love doesn't make you small. It makes you big. Walking in, in forgiveness doesn't make you like you're the one that gave in. Nah. That's the biggest lie of the devil. It's working for you. Well, I think that person should forgive me. Nah. Uh, that's not the issue here. The issue is you walk in with great authority. You reach out. You close the door. You shut that door down for your life, for your purpose. Your purpose is for your purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I thank you. Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> walk in love. Walk in love. Walk in love. Walk in love. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. Now, Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you that we receive it. We'll not let it fall to the ground. Will not ignore it. This is the key for our benefit, for our future, for increase of harvest, to walk in the Word of God, the greatest entity on earth. It's faith. But yet you said hope is important. But yet out of all those things, you need love. Oh, Jesus, I thank you for love. For God is love. God is love. Oh, Jesus, I thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I believe many of you are going to get your breakthrough uh, this, this year. Many of you. We're going to get our breakthrough. I believe it. I believe we're going to get breakthroughs every which way. Every which way. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Before you go, I want you to do something. Take another CD, DVD, another invitation to invite somebody to the things of God. Yes, invite them to church, but the most important thing is to tell them about God. I take these with me. I always, I take about five or six. I take five in my wallet, and when they run out, I get five more. So I'm hitting five per day. Come on, church. And so you hit, you hit it, you hit it hard. And remember, loving people. One day those people say, you know, I want to thank you for telling me about Jesus. Hallelujah, amen. Thank you, Lord. A beautiful DVD was put together and was given to us. Almost, I want to say, I can't remember how many, I think it was a, almost a, 3,000 of these CDs, DVDs was given to us. Because somebody believes in passing the message of Jesus. Amen. And so we're, we're going to leave out of here. And, and uh, let's come back Wednesday. I'm going to continue this message. Amen. So it's not finished. I'm going to continue it. And we're just going to grow. Remember, our mandate is to, uh, to educate, to train, and to build the born-again inner man. The inner man, your inner man, the born again spirit inner man uh, to build, to develop, train, and to educate. We're going to learn. We're going to learn some things that, Jesus, you guys are going to be giants. We're going to be giants in the land. We're going to be giants in Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And last night around midnight, we're watching a, a, a conference. It was a California conference. It was midnight when it was ending. And Christine and I are praying in front of the big screen TV. And, and Chris, both of us are feeling the presence of God so strong. I'm feeling tingles in my hand and Christine's feeling pressure and all of a sudden when they finish the conference we get a we get a phone call drrr, drrr, who's calling and it was a number of a of a lady a young lady used to uh, uh, you know used to visit here or come here and her mother listen to this her mother they were at a steakhouse last night and she cut a piece of steak and it lodged and they couldn't get it out they tried everything she's passing out they take her to emergency well, they did a, a, a surgery. They opened her, her, uh, her canal here to pull out that meat. But the thing was, when it went down, it lodged. Somehow it lodged in there. And so they had to do it. Now, the thing, the thing was that she, they, the reason why they prayed was she was an alcoholic in her young days, so she, her body was beaten down. And uh, they gave her a 50-50 chance of coming out of this, uh, this, uh, this surgery. 
So she called us and we prayed. And do you know, on the way to church, she says, Mom made it. She's living strong, healthy. They removed that piece of meat. And so, uh, so anyway, th these are things that God is going to start doing in your lives. See, this lady left two years ago, our church, in a good standing position. And, uh, but she called us, reached out to us at 12 o'clock last night. You see what, what God's doing? After that service we had. So that tells me the word's working in our lives. We've got to continue walking in that word. Amen. All right. God bless you. Have a wonderful day in Jesus. Remember, today is a beautiful day in the Lord. Be blessed. Be blessed. Have a blessed week, a blessed week, a blessed week. You go with the, thr the thrive of Jesus Christ in your heart and, and touch someone's life today. And we'll see you Wednesday. We'll continue Wednesday. Come early for prayer. Come early for service. And let's get back into this word. We only, we only spend an hour on Wednesday. That hour, we do so much. Hallelujah. Amen. So we invite you. God bless you. Hug each other in Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Bye-bye, folks. Bye-bye.